us out of this situation. But it's, it's up to us to do our part, even if others around us are not doing it. But you do your part with your mask and covering up the best you know how. I'm going to bring to our forefront uh, those who may be looking for a job. I want you to know that Far Yarn is hiring, and they are starting off their pay with $14.50 per hour. Machine operators, and you can apply online for this job. And when you apply online, tell the people, you know, who sent you. And Sister Margaret Spencer gave me this flyer with her name on it, that she's going to stand for you. So in other words, don't you take no kind of job <laughs> if you really don't want no job. So if you want to work, looking for work, she will stand behind you that you may be able to get this job at Far Yarn. There's some flyers out on the vestibule in the church. So you go out there and you get them after service. Also, I want to bring to our knowledge that there's a few who God has called home. Uh, Sister Ernestine Phillips, uh, that's Brother Franklin Phillips' mother, our security personnel's mother, passed away. And she will be uh, funeralized on Tuesday. But now tomorrow at Faith's Funeral Home in York, from 5 o'clock to 7, it's a quiet hour. In York, at Faith's Funeral Home, from 5 to 7, it's a quiet hour. And there will be a graveside service on Tuesday at 2 o'clock at Lakeview Cemetery in York. That's the cemetery on 321, going into, when you're going into York on the left. That'll be 2 o'clock tomorrow, I mean Tuesday afternoon. So keep that family in your prayer. Also, Sister Mary Crockett, that's Geraldine and Sister Ozell's sister, Mary Crockett passed away on yesterday. Keep that family in your, in your prayer. That's uh, Katrina's mother, Katrina's mother. The little man we call Brother Crockett. Crockett's grandmother. So keep that family in your prayers. No arraignments have been made yet. And also keep uh, Sister Janice Anderson's family in your prayers. This is Dr. Percent's sister in law, uh, Sister Percent's sister who passed away in Georgia. So keep that family in your prayers. There's something going on all the time around them. We have to be steadfast and knowing and realizing that any day can be our day. Don't care how healthy you may look or how healthy you will feel, I want you to know this. You are just well enough to die. So be ready. And I don't want you to leave here without me warning you to make sure that you have given your life to Christ and you are saved when that great day comes. But now I'm going to sit down and the choir is going to come and bring another selection. And the next voice you will hear after that will be the same voice you are hearing right now. I will come with a word that's from the Lord up on high. Pray with me and pray for me that God will speak to me that I can speak to you through his word.
Jesus, I'm depending on you. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I know, I know you're ready for a word. You're excited. You're listening. You're waiting. You come anticipating. God will always deliver when you're looking for a word. Because he's going to bring a word for you to listen to. Let's go to God in a moment of prayer. Gracious and all loving God. Holy Spirit. Holy yeah. Spirit, yeah. fall afresh yeah. on me. Yeah. Anoint me, Father, yeah. with your protection. Anoint me with your anointing. God, get me down in wealth wisdom. Throw me up with the cords of love that I'd be able to preach that you would be glorified. Mankind can be saved. Have your way in this service today. In Jesus' perfect and pure name, I do pray. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen and amen. Those of you with your Bibles, before I get to that, before I get to that, I want to thank uh, our technical personnel for the work they've done this week within our sanctuary trying to put our uh, technology together. I want to thank you for all of that. Thank you for all that you've done in our trustees and thank the church, the church for putting up the money to do these things we've been doing. Amen. But now we're going to go to God for a word from the Lord. Those of you with your Bible, if you would go with me to the book of Revelation, Revelation, the second chapter, and uh, you heard the reading coming from Dr. Percent this morning, and I want to go to that fourth verse of Revelation and see if I can find a text there in that fourth verse of Revelation. And we find these words. It says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. I want to use for a subject or a thought. I got something against you. I got something against you. When, when we look at this chapter, this, this chapter, when I think about Revelation, the second chapter and the third chapter, when we look at these chapters, we ought to look at them prophetically because these two chapters are strictly strictly written or either spoken by Jesus to Christ. Christ wrote all of these uh, uh, two chapters. He, he's the one that's talking. He's the one that's, that's speaking in these chapters. And, and, and what, what he is doing, he is informing the churches of Asia Minor, the seven churches of Asia Minor, to, to let them know where they have fallen off the boat. To let them know that they are doing some things wrong. But I come here today to let you know that he's not only talking to the seven churches of Asia Minor. He's also talking to St. John. Missionary Baptist Church. 1282 Bradford Heights. Gastonia, North Carolina, 28054. He's talking to us as well. And then he's speaking from, from this town, the city of Ephesus. And I want you to know the city of Ephesus is a, uh, a seaport town. 
It has some favoritism and similarity to Corinthians, the Corinth, because they were right there on the water. They had commercial commerce and they had trade coming and, and going. In other words, this city had it going on. I mean, they was hot. They was popping. And not only with that, they had one of the seven ancient wonders of the world housed in this city. And this was the goddess, Diana. And the goddess Diana, she was known for having multiple breasts. Multiple breasts. She was the god of fertility. And, and, and in this temple, uh, Diana's temple, there was prostitution all around. And can you just imagine in your mind that this town is popular? You got people coming in on boats and ships and trade going in and going out and this temple of Diana, you can imagine it was a busy time going on there. And, and, and this city of Ephesus was full, full of sin, full of sin. Something going on there all the time. But the church, the church that Paul had established in Ephesus, the church that was there, had some, some morals. They, they had some things that was going good. In other words, they had some of their eyes dotted. Not all of them. They had some of their teeth crossed. Not all of them. But they had some things in order. And I can imagine with my spiritual mind just looking back and thinking about about them. I can imagine they were so spiritual that they probably had Monday night youth Bible study. Probably had Tuesday night Sunday school study and choir practice. <clears throat> Wednesday night they probably had Wednesday night Bible study. Thursday night they probably had Quiet practice, couples meeting, ministers gathering together. And I can imagine on Friday night or Saturday, they probably worked in some time for the missionary to come together to meet. They was a very, very busy, busy church. Kind of sounded like St. John. They, 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 they had it going on. You can be so busy with church work that you forget the work of the church. And, 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 and they was, they, they had it going on. And, 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 and Jesus, Jesus commended them on some of the rights that they were doing. I'm asking ask the screen man if he can pull up the, the second verse of that chapter. Jesus kind of commended them on what they was doing right. He, he didn't just put them all down. He, he, he said, you know, something, you know, I, I, I see I've got something uh, against you. I, I, I got some fault that you, you're not quite doing everything the way I want you to do it. In, in other words, he was letting them know that, 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 that you still got to get it together. But he was saying, I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. And that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you know, he, he said, I know all of this. You don't like liars either. I don't either. He said, the Nicolonians, I don't like them either. So he, he in other words, he gave them that big kudos. But he said, I still got something. Still got something against you. And to all of us who are listening today, I'm going to indict all of us to, to take a closer look at yourself. To see where you may have jumped off the boat. To see where you may have come up wrong. 
Because, because God is saying, I, I, I got something against you. In, in other words, God knows the choir. Your choir is tight, but it sounds tight. You, 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 you got tight deacons, or they look like they're tight. You got a tight trustee board, or they look like they're tight. And in other words, you got you got your, your ushers, but they, they look like they're tired. You got the greeters out there, but they, they look like they're tired. And 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 and, 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 and as I go to that to that that, that fourth verse, it, it tells us that you, you, you have you have lost your first love. In, in other words, you 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 lost what you need. It's just like we talk about this generation of people today. And we say there's a lost generation. I want to let you know that they're not lost. They just left. They, they just they left behind. They, 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 this generation, they left in the daycare centers. They, they, they left with grandma. They left with the neighbors next door. In other words, they left raising themselves. They left home alone. They're not lost. They're just left. And those of you who are spiritual, if you would follow me with Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, and the 6th verse, which it tells us to train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. We got to get back on board with the word. Jesus came to give us instructions to get us back on the word. And the word of instruction is the Bible. In other words, the Bible says, seek ye, oh my goodness, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of this stuff all of this bling bling all of these houses all of these 22 all of this will be added up to you but go to God first and why are we on that 22nd chapter of Proverbs mosey on down to that 15th verse we as parents it, it, it lets us know that foolishness, hear me good, foolishness, and I'm sure all of us can witness to that, because all of us have played the fool one time, or maybe even more than one time. Am I right about it? But the foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. But I want you to know if you got the right kind of parents, that rod of correction will drive that foolishness far away from me. Can I write about it? Do I really have any witnesses in the house? Do y'all know about the rod of correction that'll drive that foolishness, crazy thinking, idleness, right out of your spirit? Can I write about it? Because the old folk used to say, an idle, help me preach here now. Idle mind is the devil's workshop. So we have to learn to, to straighten our act up. In, in, in other words, in other words, Jesus was saying, what he's saying, I, I got something against you. You know, I, I, I know you, 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 you pay your tithes, I know you, you're doing this. Watch out. <laughs> Help me now. I, 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 I know you come to church. And I, I know you loving your neighbor. I know you're loving one another. He said, but I got I got something against you. And, and what Jesus got against us is, is that we might be doing some things right, but we can be even doing them even better. Because I got something against you. And even though the, the hymn choir is there, 
And I bless you with a voice to sing on the hymn choir. You got a hymn choir voice. You didn't just get it ordinarily. I gave it to you. For you to work in my vineyard. I gave, I gave it to you. But you refuse to get up there and sing. You won't get there. Uh, those who I've given a gospel choir. You got a voice to sing on the gospel choir. Don't think I've given you that voice just to sing melody to yourself. I've given you that voice to sing in my church. But you won't use it. I want you to use that voice to draw people to me. I bless you with that voice. And if you're not on that doing what you're supposed to, get off the stool and do nothing and do what I told you to do. I've got something against you. And, and, and those who can sing the inspirational choir, you know I've given you that voice to sing. Get off the stool and do nothing. I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing nothing. And get on the choir. I bless some of you all with the spirit. To have a smiling face. Have a pleasant disposition. I want you to be greeters. I want you to be able to meet the people when they come into the house of worship with a smile on your face. I've given you that ability. But yet still you refuse to get out and use it. You sit on the stool and do nothing. In other words, in our churches today, I got something against you. Because we've got so many people hiding behind other people, expecting other people to do the work. Right, Thinking they're going to get it done, so you don't do nothing. I got something against you. Because I call you to get up off the stool and do nothing, and do what I have given you the gift to do. Even though your choir sounds tight, but your choir can be even better if you get up off the stool and do nothing, and do what I told you to do. Against you. Now, I know you got some deacons out there. You know, they here, there, they you're doing some stuff right. You you making some phone calls, you're doing some stuff right, but I still got something against you. You ought to be doing more than what you're doing. And some of y'all not doing nothing. I got something against you. I got something against you. I want you to get up off of that stool or do nothing. And work in the vineyard while there's time for you to work. Because there's going to come a time where time going to be no more. I want you to work while there's day, while you can. Because when nighttime comes, no man will be able to work. Ah, I got something against you. Trustees, I ain't going to leave you out. Y'all do a good job. Keep the church clean. Keep a place to worship. I appreciate that. But, 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 but some of you, it may be some, that could step up to do even more uh -huh. while letting others work the harder to get the job done. Yeah. Let us work this thing together. Let's do our part and watch God do the rest. Jesus said, I got something against you because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And I want you to know that if you don't do it, If you don't do it, I'm going to take something from you. If you don't do it, you won't have it long. You've heard that old saying, if you don't use it, that's the free kid. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. And, and Jesus is saying that, that, that not only the greeters, but the ushers. I bless some to be ushers, to be able to greet the people, to meet the people, to, to direct the people in the church. I, I, I'm giving you that spirit because everybody can't be a greeter. Everybody can't be an usher. Everybody don't like people. See, in other words, Jesus knows I got some crazy children. I got some different children so I have to have special people to handle them. So when I call you to do this work, I'm calling you for my hard-headed children. You need to get up 
off the stool to do nothing. Because I got some, 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 some cotton Christians. I, I got some linen Christians. I, I got some silk Christians. I, I got some timid Christians. And it takes certain people to do certain things. Am I right about it? And, and, and go to that, that, that fifth verse. Take me to that fifth verse. I want you to start going back. See, sometimes when I bless you so long, you forget how you got there. You, 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 you forget who put you there. You, you, you forget how you got that house you're living in. You know your credit was shot. You forgot about all of that. Remember, therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do the first work or else I come to you quickly and remove your lampstand. In other words, I'm going to remove something that you need, that you think you need. For who you really need, you really need me. So sometimes you might be like Isaiah. I saw the Lord when King, I got some teachers in them, King Uzziah died. Sometimes if we propped up, we can't see the Lord like we ought to see him. To, to the Lord pull the rug out from under us. Sometimes we have to hit rock bottom before we know who's the rock at Who's the rock at the bottom? And he says, remember, when you was in the hospital, who brought you out? Remember, when you were looking for a job, who helped you to find a job? And that's what I want you to remember. I want you to look back. When you thought that baby wasn't going to come, when the baby was in the hospital sick, but I brought him back out again. Do you still remember? Do you remember who woke you up this morning? Started you on your way. In other words, when you remember all of these things, I want you to start repenting. Because you haven't been telling the word. You haven't been spreading the word. You haven't been telling others the goodness of the Lord. Don't keep it to yourself. If I have blessed you. If I have pulled you around something. If I pull you under something. If I pull you over something. That means you got a testimony. That means you got passed the test. You ought to tell somebody about my goodness. Tell somebody. What I did for you, and what I did for you, and what I did for you, and what I did for you, so they can reach out to me, and I can bless them. You see, I got something against you. You're too tight lips, too tight mouth. You got it all for yourself. I didn't make you like that. We both to share one another, share the gift that I have given you. It's not all for you. I bless you to be a blessing to somebody else. Don't think that car that I bless you with, you can't ride nobody else in it for you. If somebody needs to go to the doctor or the hospital, I want you to find time to help somebody else along the way. Somebody want to come to church or worship service. Don't think that car is too good for somebody else to sit in. Be able to reach out to one another. Be able to help one another. Be able to get one another through this trying time. Times are hard now. It's like the Bible study this morning, it said, do not forsake the assembly. In other words, of coming together with one another because we draw strength from each other. I draw strength from you. I, I draw strength from her. I draw strength from you and you draw strength from me. We draw strength from each other when we come together and look up and praise God together. We draw strength together. We got a reason to praise the Lord. Do I have anybody out here today that don't mind praising the Lord? Do I have anybody out here today that come to church this morning to give God the praise? Am I right about it? If God's been good to you, don't fool me now. If God's been good.
good to you? Did he make way for you? Did he wake you up this morning? Did he guide you on your way? I don't know my dear, but I walked up this morning with Jesus on my mind. I woke up this morning coming to church to give him praise. I know when praise is.
I'm liable to come in. I may take your husband. May take your wife. May take your children. Take your job. Take that car that you cherish that can't nobody ride in but you. I'll take that car and wrap it around the tree. Would you in it? Don't turn from me. This is a word to the wise. Don't put nothing in front of God. Don't put nothing before God. God does not play second fiddle. He's first. He's first. He's first. And foremost. Put him first. One lady was asking me one time, said, Well, Pastor, I gotta pay my house notes or pay my tithes. What do I need to do? I'm going to be like Jesus. What did the Bible say? Bring, bring, bring the tithe. Come on, to the storehouse. And see, see, when you, in other words, people can't argue with the word. But when they get on me, I put the word, word on, what the word say. You argue with that. They can't argue with that. The word say, bring it to the storehouse. And, and don't, I'm not saying my head don't get soft now, but my head was hard one time. I was one of those two dollar people. Best I could do was two dollars. But now I've learned. Ooh, I've learned. You can't beat God giving. When you give to Him, He'll give it back to you. Now, if there's anyone out there today that has been listening, and you have decided within yourself that I am ready to give my life to Christ. I'm ready to do the right thing. I'm ready to come on the Lord's side. And I want you to come just as you are. As the scripture says, just as I am. Without one plea, just as I am. If you are out there, I want you to stand with me if you are ready to give your life to Christ. And I'm going to take you down the Romans road. And I'm going to take you to Romans 3 and 10. Where it says that it is written, there is none, none righteous. None of us, nobody, none of us are righteous on our own. No, not even one. So don't feel guilty about you the only one. No, none of us. And let's go to Romans 3 and 23. For all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all of us. Do I have anybody in here who have not sinned? That's right, all of us have sinned and come short. Listen, listen, we sin by omission, we sin by commission, so all of us have sinned and come short of his glory. But let me tell you this, what, what Christ did, even though we are sinners, no count, no good, while we were yet sinners, God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, he didn't wait for me to get my life cleaned up. Like some of these religions say, once you get your life straightened up, get cleaned up, then you come join us. No, no, Christ didn't do that. He jumps in the ditch right with us then. Help us to get clean. He died for us <clears throat> before we was clean. Because he loved us that much. And I want to move from there to 
6.23. That if we stay in our sin and do not give our lives to Christ, this is a sad note, and don't give your life to Christ. Uh, in other words, we are dying in our sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you give your life to Christ, you will live forever. You are looking at one now that's going to live forever because I've given my life to Christ. And we're going to move to Romans 10 and 9. Because if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Jesus as Lord and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. In other words, there's no might there. There's no if there. It says thou shalt be saved. But I, I like this last verse that I like to come up with. 10 and 13. And what you did, this, this really includes everybody. You can be a, a Muslim. You can be Buddha. You, you can be whatever religion you want to be, but if you want to get on the right track, get on the right train, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. That's you. I want you to repeat after me. And you ready to be saved? Raise your hands toward glory. And say, Father God, I am a sinner saved by your grace. And I know you died for my sin. And I know, I know, I know, I, I, I know, Father, you are sitting beside the Father. The right hand side of God right now. Perpetuating for my sin. And I believe that. And now. I'm saved. My confession turns into salvation. And now I'm saved. And if that's you. That's all salvation is. Is to give your life to Christ. And believe that he died for your sins. Now if that's you out there. I want you to find you a church home. Find you a, a church that you can fellowship with. Find you a church that believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And be a part of that church. And if somehow you can't find that, and you want to be a part of this church here, you can write or call me. Write a letter to 1282 Bradford Heights Road, Gastonia, North Carolina, 28054, and correspond that way, uh, either through a phone call. You can call me, call the pastor's contact, 704-864-6222, extension 208. And leave it on that answer machine if I'm not there. But please, ma'am, please, sir, I will definitely respond back to you. Because I am in the business working for the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And I want to reach out to those who want to be saved. And if you want to be a part of this church family, we can get it together through that work that part out. Now, if you're out there and you want to support this ministry here at St. John, you can you can you can give by Givelify, you can give by PayPal, or you can give by coming to the church with your credit card, or you can come to the church with a check or cash. And however you give, and let me explain this to you. Giving to God is giving on fertile, fertile ground. God will give back to you. I've never, King David said, 
I've been, I'm old, but I, I've been young. And now I'm old. King David said, I've never seen the righteous. Help me talk in that. Forsaken of the seed begging bread. So if you want to give to that way, you can do that. And we would appreciate your giving. And I want you to know this. Uh, at the end of the tax season year, once you give to this church, we will give you a tax exempt write off for giving to this church uh, to help the ministry because we want to get the word out and help us to get the word out. And I'm asking you to give whatever the Lord place on your heart to give because he wants to bless you. Now, this is going to end our service today. But it won't end it for next week. We got another service coming next next Sunday. Same time, same place. And, and I want you to, to, to be ready to come back to us next Sunday. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for your prayers. And I will see you next, next Sunday. Goodbye.